Okay, so we'll get into the open response now of the January 2016 exam. All right, so they want us to reflect over the line X is 1. First, we've got to know that that vertical line is the line X is 1. Um, so now when you reflect over a line, it becomes the perpendicular bisector of say b to b prime a to a prime c to c prime now we count when it's a vertical line like that just because that makes it a right angle but uh, really need to know the perpendicular bisector idea of the image and pre-image segment so from a it's one two three four five One too many, that was four. One, two, three, four. So that's A prime. And that's going to be C prime. Uh, make sure we use our straight edge. Uh, I can't on this software, so it's the best I can do. But don't freehand that. Make sure we use our straight edge. Uh, it doesn't, it just says label. That means put the, you know, B prime, C prime, A prime. Uh, it doesn't say state the coordinates. Um, so just so you don't take a risk, you don't have to put them in there, you know, but I might say what A prime is. Let's see, that's the origin. One, two, three, four, five, oh. uh, B prime looks like it's two, two, four, and C prime is at two, zero. All right. Let's see, parallel, okay. So this is... Um, when chords are parallel in a circle, uh, the arcs that they cut off are congruent. So arc BD is congruent to arc AC, if we ever need that. All right, it says, if the measure of angle BCD, 30 degrees, uh, we want the measure of AOB. So we want this one right here. That's the angle we want. All right. So here's the process. Uh, this is an inscribed angle, this angle C here. So its measure, if we double it, we get this intercepted arc measure. So 30 times 2, 60. Uh, so the measure of um, arc BD is 60 degrees. All right, um, we're trying to show our work, so this is because of parallel chords. Arcs between are congruent. Just trying to explain, make sure that everything you do, um, you know, is explained or justified. So if arc BD is 60 degrees, arc AC is 60 degrees. Now what I'm going to do is, because of that, I'm going to say the measure of angle AOC, which is in a central angle, is also equal to 60 degrees. Uh, central angles have the same measure. Okay, as their intercepted arc angle measure. All right, uh, and then we're simply going to use the linear pair idea, right? So if that's 60, these two together make a linear pair. Uh, so 180 minus 60 is 120. So the measure of angle AOB is 120 degrees. Plenty of work there, plenty of justification, so we can move on. Remember, these are only two pointers, uh, so we, you know, we don't have to include every single step, but All right, so we'll graph this. Uh, it's optional, you know, so that just means we could do it algebraically. Uh, but they give us the graph. Let's see if that makes it easier. Okay, looks like that's T, that's P. And it's a directed segment, just simply means that it's uh, heading in this direction. 
All right. We want to make we want to find J. So that directed segment is put into a 2 to 1 ratio. All right. So the first thing you should write down. 2 to 1 ratio means uh, the segment should have three equal parts. All right, as soon as you say that, you've earned some credit right there. All right, let's go ahead and try to figure this out. Personally, I like to do it this way. You know, I like to look at one direction, and I'll split that into three equal parts. So we're going across, you know, your change in X basically uh, is six, three equal parts, so each part is two. So when I move over two, right, that's going to give me one point. If I move over a second two, that's a second point. So right now what we have is we have three equal parts. And really I, all I had to do was look at either the X or the Y direction really don't have to look at both um, and you find them now um, all right we have to move from P to T on a directed segment or vector and it's going to be a two to one ratio so that's going to be two parts from P to T one part and then that's going to be J right there so now we just look at the location one two one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be the location two, five. So J is the location uh, two, five. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. Basically, what we're going to look at here is if I can map triangle A, B, C to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, using a sequence of rigid motions, they're going to be congruent. And that's essentially what we're looking at right here. So personally, the way I do this is it looks like we're going to translate uh, triangle ABC down three units. So in notation, it looks like that. Uh, let's just call it. I don't know. We'll call it DEF. Just to give it another, you know. We don't want to call it A prime because we're not there yet. So we'll call this D E F. Again, use a straight edge. Uh, I can't on this software, but uh, make sure that we're accurate. Now we're going to reflect uh, triangle DEF over the y-axis. Okay, so that's going to take, it's going to be, let's say it's F prime. Uh, let's say that's E prime. And that's D prime. All right, so that's going to take, um, okay, that's going to equal triangle D prime, E prime, F prime. All right, so what we have to show, which it looks like we just did, um, if D prime is at the same location, As a prime, e prime, same location as e prime, and whoops, sorry, b prime. And f prime, same location as c prime. So, what I basically did was, after the translation, then a line reflection, shown above, uh, we can map 
triangle ABC onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, so since we were able to map one figure onto another using rigid motion transformations. That would be translation line reflection. That means they're congruence. They don't change the size. Um, this proves triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. So that's the terminology they want, rigid motion transformations. Uh, and then, of course, you're showing your work, and there's no question you're going to get full credit on that. All right, number 29. Looks like a pretty straightforward trig problem. We've got an angle, we've got a side length, and they want the ladder length, which would be right here. All right, so compared to this acute angle, we have a side that's opposite, we have a side that's adjacent, and we have the hypotenuse, All right? So use our acronym to help us remember which trig function. It looks like we're using opposite and hypotenuse, okay? So that's going to be um, psi. All right, so sine is 70 degrees. It's going to equal opposite over hypotenuse. What is sine of 70? So hit that in your calculator. Make sure it's in degree mode. Uh, that's going to give us a point 0.9396. And we'll cross multiply. Divide. So we're solving now. And we get uh, 31.925. Okay. Now they want the nearest foot. All right. Looks like the ladder. It's about 32 feet tall. Okay. Let's see. All right. Um, all right, we got two different Petri dishes. Which one has a greater density? Again, density. It's going to be stuff over space. Uh, looks like we're just going with two-dimensional. So, um, yeah, area is probably going to be, yeah, it looks like area is going to be our space. All right, so we'll say the area of A. Um, okay, so pi r squared. Uh, half of 51 is 25.5, oops, so pi times uh, 25.5 squared. Uh, let your calculator do that work. And it looks like 2,042.82. Uh, area of B. Okay, pi r squared. And the air, let's see, the radius is 37.5. And that's looking like 44.17.86. All right. Let's see. All right, now the density of each separate. Okay, here we go. Let's kind of separate these. So the density of this one is, we've got 40,000 bacteria in a space of 2,042.82. Over here, we have 72,000. A little more space. Uh, double space at least so looks like this one's going to have more density all right let the calculator do the work it's 19.5808 and that's going to be uh, bacteria per millimeter squared if 
if you ever needed the dimensions. I know science does a great job with that. Um, we kind of ignore the dimensions a little bit in math, but um, yeah, and I guess if you do want to write that down, make sure you're accurate about it. It's probably safer to not even do it. So that's bacteria per millimeter squared. Uh, this is the greater one. So, um, dish A has the greater population density after one hour. All right, uh, next one, let's see, I would normally graph this problem. Uh, I'm going to solve this one algebraically, though. Uh, when we dilate a line and the center is the origin, okay, we're going to get either the same line or a parallel line. We'll get the same line when the line passes through the center of dilation. It's not going to here, okay? We'll solve, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's get it in. Uh, the goal is kind of y equals mx plus b form, right? It's the best one to work with on this problem. Um, I know this isn't the most efficient, but I'm going to do it. Okay, so just be careful that's a negative y still. And multiply by negative 1 or divide by negative 1, however you want to um, get rid of the negative. Okay, so right now, the reason I didn't graph it is because I know... This line's not going to go through the origin. Its y-intercept is not zero. Okay, so that's the y-intercept. Um, when the y-intercept or the center dilation is the origin, we can just multiply the y-intercept by the scale factor. Uh, so when we get a parallel line, we're going to keep the same slope. Uh, when we dilate a line. We got to move that point, whatever it is. Now, the y-intercept. Um, you know, if you see this quick, uh, here's the center dilation. Here's the y-intercept down here, negative four. This space is four. We're going to multiply that, you know, that space or that distance across. So four times two is eight. So we're going to go from the center of dilation. We're going to go down eight. Well, that's going to take us to negative eight. So the y-intercept is going to be negative 8. So here's our whole equation, uh, 3x minus 8. Okay? All right. Aspect ratio. Okay. So what we have now is we should, again, we should sketch a model. It's going to be 16 to 9. And we do measure screen size by this diagonal. Now we assume it's a rectangle, uh, so it doesn't matter which direction we go, right? Both both diagonals are the same. Uh, what I'm going to do is Pythagorean theorem here. I know when other students did this, um, you know, they did not do the Pythagorean theorem at this point. I'm going to. Um, let's see. So that is 337. Okay, take the square root, and whatever the square root of 337 is. If you want, uh, you can convert it, but um, let's see, 18.35 is approximately the uh, diagonal length. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get a bigger screen, but... It's going to use the same ratio of length to width. That's essentially what they're saying in all of this. Okay. Um, let's see. We're going to keep that ratio. Okay, the height of the screen. So we're going to say that's the height, that's the length. The height of this screen is 20.6. Okay. And uh, let's see. If this is 18.357, we want to know... Diagonal length. All right, we'll call this, uh, we'll call it X. All right, these are going to be similar triangles. The same aspect ratio, right? 
So we're going to say 9 is to 20.6 as 18.357 is 2x. And we get, where is that number? Uh, looks like 378.16. Divide by 9, uh, we get 42.018, and they want the nearest inch. Okay, so we're going to say um, that's approximately 42 inches. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. All right, 33. Oh, that, by the way, this one is a four-point question. This is the first one on the exam. All right. So make sure that we've got a little more work involved on this one um, than a, just a two-pointer. All right, that's important here. Okay. So these two sides are given as parallel. That's going to get us alternate interior angles. Yeah. All right. So when you draw in a line, we just call it an auxiliary line. Now, I look this up. Okay, it basically is to help us so that we can do the proof. Auxiliary line just means you're going to draw it in to help us do the proof. You don't need any justification other than to identify what it is. It's just to help, all right, to help us prove. Now, there's nothing wrong with adding that in. We're not making any claim uh, that we can't justify. All right, uh, let's see. Why is the measure of 1 equal to the measure of ACD? You're looking at the alternate interior angles theorem, and that's for both of them. So alternate interior angles. And I'll write that out this time, but you can just say alternate interior angles theorem. I'll say R congruent when oops, uh, the lines are parallel. You know, we got parallel lines cut by a transversal. All right, this one, kind of a jump, so I'm going to try to explain a few things. If you look at the angles they're talking about, they're talking about these three right here. So what I like to say is, okay, they're moving all the way from here to here, 180 degrees. That DC, E, okay, is a straight angle. So that's kind of what we have to say is uh, angle DCE is a straight angle. Uh, straight angles measure uh, 180, 180 degrees. Uh, and these three angles all their measures um, basically in these three angles add to uh, the straight angle. We'll say angle DCE. So we're trying to bridge the gap here. That was kind of a big jump, but um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we covered it with that. Say some about straight angle, angle addition postulate, something like that. You're probably going to get the credit there. Uh, and then this one's simply substitution. Okay, uh, you're going back to step three. You're subbing in one, right, right there, because you can. You're subbing three in right there, and that's what we have. All right. Uh, I think another four pointer. I'm going to have to, let's see, I'm going to have to come back to this one. I'm going to use the side, side, side uh, triangle congruence theorem. When I do this, uh, I'm going to probably use my geometry sketch pad software for this. Uh, so I'll come back and do that in the next session. Um, and we'll make another video for the last three problems. Take care. Take care.